Alright, what's up guys? I hope you're doing well. James here from jamesd4site.com. So kind of what I wanted to talk about was the turning point for Paul Warburg himself. Um, Paul Warburg, wow, it's apparently too early in the morning. But Paul Warburg is kind of known as like the father of the Federal Reserve. And I've done a few videos talking about how originally when he was trying to kind of, you know, introduced the idea of a new central bank in the United States um, in the early 1900s, right? I'm talking about like first century 1900s. And so basically, first century, first decade of the 1900s. Um, but basically, he didn't believe it was possible um, for the United States because of the kind of the political environment and how the American society itself just wasn't very tuned in with the idea of having another central bank, right? They were very into the whole decentralized, especially in the banking respect, right? Um, and so he was kind of like introducing these topics, started doing, kind of pushing a little bit, pushing his ideas forward, um, especially in the academic space. However, um, there was a kind of turning point in even his idea, right? Not, or not his idea, but in his kind of, his own sentiment, right, for his, for his baby, if you will, right, and so basically, this happened um, at the Metropolitan Club of New York, apparently, it was a hearing um, about kind of banking reform or so, or not explicitly about banking reform, but basically just kind of one of those economic conferences in general sort of thing, right, and basically what had happened, it seems, was Senator Aldrich was there, and if you've known a little bit about um, the f history of the Federal Reserve itself, Senator Aldrich was kind of the, I don't know if I'd say founder, but really kind of was the one who pushed for the banking reform and the Aldrich plan, and he was kind of the Republican powerhouse in the Senate, right, um, at the time. And so basically, and this was directly after the National Monetary Commission had finished their investigations in Europe, and so that was part of the um, Aldrich Freeland bill was it created the National Monetary Commission to kind of do the academic research for the uh, what became the Federal Reserve in general, basically for banking reform and how basically what are the problems of our current system at the time, um, talking about 1907 to 1912 or so, given kind of a time frame, what are the kind of problems with our current monetary system and then how can we improve that, right? And that was kind of the whole point of the monetary National Monetary Commission. And so at this hearing, Senator Aldrich was there. And basically, and, bas and Warburg more or less quotes, um, granted this was written two decades or so. Um, this is from Warburg's book himself, uh, The Federal Reserve System, Its Origin and Growth, right? And so he's quoting Aldrich, but it's also like this was written in 1930. Um, and what was happening here was before the Aldrich plan, which is like 1910 or so, right? Or we'll say the creation of the plan itself, right? It was kind of in its development. So basically he says, our war, or I'm sorry, Aldrich comes up to Warburg and, and asks him, he's like, or tells him, he's like, I like your ideas. I have only one fault with them. And to quote Warburg from his book himself, uh, the intimation that the senator had been won over to the Central Reserve Doctrine came like a thunderbolt from a clear sky. But I asked, and with great composure as I could, with as great of composure as I could command, what that fault was. He answered, you are too timid with it. And so basically, um, Warburg even from Senator Aldrich before this was like basically had a neg had negative feedback we'll say from the whole introduction as he says of a central reserve doctrine right and so that wasn't something that was very palatable we'll say um, even from those kind of banking reform senators as Aldrich was right and so with that being said he Warburg was completely caught off guard um, of him being like, hey, I like your ideas and I just think you're too timid with it. And basically goes on to say, see if I can find it. 
at the bottom yeah and his uh aldrich's response was yes but you say we cannot have a central bank and i say we can right and that's warburg quoting aldrich right it's the concept that really matters um with it being direct quotes from almost we'll say 18 years almost 20 years somewhere in there because uh, he doesn't give an exact date of this commission or of this uh this hearing at the metropolitan club of new york right and so about two decades later we'll the quoting is kind of probably not going to be exact but it's really the concept that matters and so basically warburg goes on to say suddenly he found the roles res uh, reversed whereas before he had doubted whether the senator could ever be persuaded to consider any central reserve planned he now found it in his part to dissuade him from going too far in that direction right and so that's kind of the whole point it's kind of the i don't want to say cost benefit analysis but it's really like on, kind of on a spectrum of centralization of his kind of uh, at least how warburg thought of his central reserve plan right and we talked a little bit about warburg's specific plan himself that he kind of created in a way uh with the um the united reserve bank um plan right and i think that was the previous video but i don't remember exactly which one yeah the united reserve bank plan went a little bit in like the 11 powers um that he gave the plan and you kind of see how that relates to what we have for the federal reserve now right and so basically warburg's reasons for not believing in senator or not believing senator aldrich he gives three of them so the first was that the operations of the of the European central banks were predicated upon a large bill market in which modern bills of exchange could readily be bought and sold, which was lacking with the US, right? And that's something we talked about before. We've talked about these three points explicitly a few times. Um, but I just want to say, because think about how, what exactly did the National Monetary Commission do? They went to Europe and studied the European central bank and that, that's what they were doing right and it was after the the monetary commission the national monetary commission finished that research that this conversation is even happening to kind of put it into context and so warburg is like kind of explicitly saying like hey we don't have that developed bill market like the european central bank does right and that's a big problem and that's one of the things that he talked about in his form of monetary reform and we gave of the 11 powers of his plan we talked about that rather extensively because there's three of the points are all for bills of exchange but at different maturities right and it's kind of like different types of endorsement for which duration of maturity and kind of rank them right um regardless uh secondly his second kind of i don't know if it'd be an argument against but second problem with the system right was that a central bank such as existed in europe having wide powers to deal with individuals was not politically possible in the united states on account of the dangers of abuse and of the deep-seated prejudice prejudices and suspicion which it would encounter again we've talked about this rather extensively basically how politically impalatable it is right especially in, you know in the united states to have that much especially a central banking entity kind of have that much power over the um over people right and that was keep in mind this is in the early 1900s or like the first and second decade 1900 to 1912 or so right roughly and so getting that in mind and not talking about now with what we have as the federal reserve now this was before it happened just to clarify so and finally it was to be feared that such a central bank if established would not live long because it was likely to become almost at once a target of bitter political attacks basically turn like another andrew jackson comes up and like he did with the uh, second bank of the united states right worried that that was going to happen essentially again um it didn't obviously the federal reserve still here but yeah and so he goes on to say or I guess kind of concluding on this first interaction, uh, when he left the Mo uh, Metropolitan Club, he was elated because what only a few hours before had appeared to be an insurmountable obstacle, basically getting Aldrich on his side, um, in a way of 
pro in a way of progress was now crumbling away and for the first time he felt confident that genuine banking reform was within the grasp of the United States right and so this was really kind of Warburg's turning point himself to when he fought he because before he was kind of like just I guess like putting it running his head against the wall is a good way to describe it where he was basically trying to get this reform done or getting people open to the reform I should say because it was really that American sentiment at the time that he was really battling right and it wasn't until after this interaction with Aldrich that he believed that you know could actually be done right and so this is really kind of a turning point for Warburg himself when we actually started to believe all of his work might actually come to fruition, right? And it wasn't just kind of like an academic proposal in a way, right? And so, yeah. And you have to keep in mind, especially with Warburg, how he, his background, right? Because he was a German immigrant, obviously. Um, and there was a lot of controversy. Like, he even, when he was on the Board of Governors after the Federal Reserve was kind of instated, right? He was on, I don't remember if he was on, like, that first iteration or the second one. One of the first two, um, off the top of my head. And basically, he ended up resigning, right, uh, whenever the United States went into World War One, for obvious reasons, right? And it was one of those, because there was a lot of controversy of having a German immigrant running American monetary policy or at least helping run uh, American monetary policy when they were at war with Germany and so it was kind of a hot topic we'll say and that being said it's also like I don't remember off the top of my head where exactly the nuance and the timing was I don't remember if it was right before we got into the war or directly after we we're kind of where in that time frame it was so i'll have to look more into that um it's been a while since i've gone through that section but otherwise i'm gonna leave this here so basically the metropolitan club in new york that's one thing i really liked about this book right um it's like 800 something pages it's, it's a, it could probably weigh down a bo uh, boat but <laughs> but it gives a lot of like nuanced ex historical examples like the Metropolitan Club of New York that you won't get from, say, like a textbook or something like that. That just doesn't talk about it, right? Because in a class or in a kind of a broad overview of the, even the Federal Reserve itself, it's, it's, it's too into the weeds for them to really want to do it right and so it's really only in these kind of we'll say primary sources in a way because it was written by warburg right so it's only in those in the very kind of very very niche topics within that kind of historical segment i guess you could say um that you find these types of things which i is the those are the types of things that i think are really kind of important because if you think about what history is itself it's not really like a sequence of events like people normally think like what i mean by that is like it's not like you know a happens then b happens and c happens and so on it's kind of like all this stuff like there's so many things happen simultaneously and like there's there's individual re um interactions of people and like you don't know like something you're doing now and then you meet someone like two days later who had a different experience and something changes or whatever like it's very dynamic is where i'm going and doing terribly at it and so understanding these little kind of new events even if it's not like foundational in what you remember or what you learn about a topic it's kind of it can help kind of it helps understand the nuances and how dynamic the history and kind of the storyline is i guess probably could have done a better way of better job of articulating it but whatever <laughs> anyways i'm gonna leave this one here so i hope you guys have a good night and i will see you on the next one